your problems don't have to have you. I don't care what they say, but your problems don't have you. The scripture said, he will not allow you to be tempted. Above that, you are able. Above that, you are able. Above that, you are able. So pastor, tell me how to get above it. Your praise will help you stay above that. I said your praise will help you stay above that. Come on, look at somebody and tell me if you praise him, he'll help you stay above that. And not only that, but he will make a way of escape so you'll be able to bear it. Give somebody a high five and tell them he will make a way. Come on, tell them he will make a way. I'm going to leave y'all alone, y'all. Y'all came to have church, but I came to worship him. I wonder if there's anybody God been good to this week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like what Hezekiah said. He said, I can't praise you in the grave. I want all the folk who are alive this morning to give God a shout of praise. The dead folk can't praise him. But if you got a mouth, open your mouth and give God some praise in here. Bless him. Turn with me to Genesis 41 and 41. I was in prayer and Holy Spirit said, tell the people it's not over. Now, if you don't remember anything else I say, write that down. It's not over. When, when you're in the problem and the stress level begins to rise, I want you to say that it's not over. You get the eviction notice, foreclosure, whatever. Problems in your marriage or whatever. Encourage yourself. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself. Say, hey, Jim, it's not over. Because the flesh want to give up. The body want to give up. You get tired of going through stuff. But your spirit got to say, it's not over. And not only that, but we're going to win this. Every champion goes to the game believing that they've already won. And you play hard until the referee blow the whistle. Even if you're 30 points behind, you keep playing hard until you win. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Genesis 41 and the 41st verse says, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. Now, Joseph had gone through a lot of trouble. And for those of you who have never heard the story of Joseph, and you should read it sometime, he was the youngest of his brothers. And Joseph, at 17, was given a promise by God that he was going to rule over his brethren. And not just his brethren, but also his mother and his father. He shared his dream with his family, and his family turned on him. I'm not even going to deal with that. And incidentally, after he had shared that and his brothers turned on him, they beat him up, threw him in a pit. He was sold to the Ishmaelites, 
They intended the killing, but Reuben, the eldest son, didn't let it happen. God always makes a way. They pulled him out of the hole, sold him to the Ishmaelites, who were his cousins. Isn't that something? Don't be surprised if the people who are most vehemently working against you are your family members. But that's all right. Because whether God works through family, friends, or foes, I am going to be everything he said I am to be. Look at somebody and tell them let him work. And he goes through a myriad of problems. But now he's about 30 years old, and the promise of God is coming to pass in his life. Now, the scripture said that Pharaoh said, I have set you over all of the realm of Egypt. But it wasn't Pharaoh that did it. It was God. Who did it? So understanding that, we could say in verse 41 that God is saying to Joseph, see, and I need to encourage somebody here and let you know that if you will not give up, eventually the same thing is going to be said to you, see? I told you God was going to bring you out. See, I told you God was going to restore everything that you lost. You thought you weren't going to make it, but see, come on, look at somebody and say, see, see. you were going to give up. You were going to throw in the towel. I, I was encouraging you, and I was telling you to read your Bible. I was telling you to spend more time in prayer. I was telling you to keep on pressing and keep on coming. And see, exactly what I told you was going to happen is happening. I told you God was going to deliver you. I told you that God was going to make a way for you. See, God never fails. God never reneges on his plan for rewarding those who will continue to walk up right before him. I have never seen anybody who stayed in God's face, who stayed in the will of God, I've never seen them lose their reward. Give somebody a high five and shout, see? And then you read about all the blessings, but I often wonder, why is it, God, that we have to go through so many different things to get to where you want us to be? Go to 1 Peter 4 and 12. God, why is it that I have to go through the wilderness to get to the promised land? God, why is it that I have to go through the fiery furnace to get to what you promised me? Why is it, God, that I have to go through bad relationships and setbacks and disappointments and failures? And don't worry about failures because if you take three steps forward and then two steps back, you're still ahead one step. <laughs> you just have to keep stepping. Encourage somebody and tell them, keep stepping. In 1 Peter 4, 12, the Amplified Bible says, Beloved, do not be amazed and bewildered at the fiery ordeal which is taking place to test your quality. To test your quality. When you become a Christian, when you get saved, when you become a Christian, you are constantly being improved. You are constantly being brought to a place of perfection. 